Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to go over and talk about the pass by reference option. Now many of you may have seen this option available to you when you are creating your functions but never too sure what actually that means or you've noted why there's some pins that are circle and some are diamond shaped. What does that mean? Well we're going to go through that as well as some tips and tricks on how to actually make best use of it as well. So let's jump in and take a look at what we mean by pass by reference. So for this example, I'm just going to create a function library um, just so it's easier and not tied to anything, just to show you that it is something you can do everywhere. So I'm going to go to blueprint function library and we'll make a common library, we'll call it. And in here, we're going to create a function, okay? And let's say we want to um, set integer. Okay, so something simple like this. Now, when you're creating a function on the inputs, if you are adding an input into here, and we'll say this is the int, and it's going to be an integer. When you expand open this option, you'll see there's an option for pass by reference. And what it will do, you'll see it changes that circle pin into a diamond one. Oh. And you may be wondering, well, why? What's the point of that? And look leads to why some really powerful that you can do with uh, these sort of functions. So what pass by reference actually does means is, well, first of all, we need to understand what this is doing. So when we pass through the integer through here, basically what you're doing is just sending a copy of it. And that's the easiest way to explain it. It's basically a copy of it going over and it's a working copy. So if you wanted to then set the variable outside of here, you need to return what you do on here and um, save it back to wherever it came from so for example you may have done something like this before where we've done a return node and the return is going to have a result and we may have another one here we'll do increment and we'll do integer plus increment and then output that you may have done something like this so that on your player character We'll just do that on the player character. And we'll just do, I'll push the two key. Um, we'll just do the um, set integer function we've just done. And we'll do, um, let's get a variable in here, uh, my value, we'll call it. So it could be like HP level, whatever we could put. And I can pass that through into the integer there and increment it by three. And then I need to set it back to my value here. You may have done something like this before, okay? Where you're doing a function and you're just storing the result that either inside the function or outside the function, depending on where the function is. Now, this is all well and good, but <clears throat> it could be a lot simpler. And just to demonstrate this working, what I will do is I'll print string this value here. So yeah, if I go into here and push two, you see it's going to increase by three each time. Okay. And to demonstrate something else as well, help demonstrate this, I'm going to put in another one of these and change that to, uh, oh, I can't change it there, can I? Debug key three. We'll just do a print string of the actual value itself. So, so yeah, if I push two, increases the number, push three to report the number. As you see, it's storing as 12. So there's actually a, a nicer way of doing this um, and you're using it as a pass by reference. So let's have a look at what that does differently. So if I click on my input for this integer and click pass by reference, what that's going to do is rather than passing through a copy of the actual variable, it will send the actual variable itself, the actual memory of that variable. So what I can do here is I can now do something to this integer without having to return it. So for example, a classic example is I can increment it. And you may have seen this on the increment tool that like you got, you get a diamond. Okay. Cause that's exactly what it's doing. Yeah. And we can output the result if we want there, but 
in this case, I don't need to really do that because uh, if I go back to my first person character, I can take all of that off there. And this will just increase the value. Actually, I should have put the, uh, the pinch string back on. There you go. So notice I'm not doing this set my value anymore. And when I push play, and hit two, increment it, and then I can report it. Okay, so really, really simple uh, system. And it's increasing by one because we're incrementing it. Okay, increment. But that's all well and good. And you can see it's outputting and storing it, and I, I can keep it for free. And that, the benefit of doing something like that is you can make generic functions to help you do some pretty cool things. I'll do an example one in a second. But there may be something else you want to know, and that is, well, how do I actually increment it by this value? Not increment, increment it like this. Okay, well, okay, let's talk through that. There's that. But what do you do with this thing? So there's nothing you can actually do with this because you can't set it back to that int because you've done something to it now. And there's no addition with a pass by reference version. So what do you actually do? And there's a node you want to use now called set by ref. Set by ref var, you put this in here. And as you can see here, it's requiring the target. So what is the actual variable that's going to be affected here? And we plug in our int there. And now my value can go into there. There you go. And the result for this, I can just output the int like that if I wanted to. And go back to my player character. And now what we should see is it incrementing by three, not just one. So go back here. And if I hit three to report it, as you saw, it saved it. So what's so special about this? What can you do with this? As I say, it's got loads of different uses. You can come up with your own definitely in the future. But let's make it one that could prove out to be quite useful. So where does this come in useful? Well, you can now use it to make more generic functions that you can use elsewhere in your uh, library, for example. So let's do one that could be quite useful. We're going to do set integer or increment integer. Integer clamped. And on here, I'm going to add to the inputs here. I'm going to add a integer. We call this one min, another one as max. And I don't want these to be passed by references. I just want these to be values that I'm setting. And when I add the value here, int plus increment, I want to clamp it. And that be the min, max, and then the return value will go up to the set integer. And what we've got now is we've got a function we can pass through and just tell it to clamp it at a certain range. So I could say nine as the range here and hit compile. And as I increase the value, that's it, it won't go any higher than nine. So a working example of that could be quite useful for, say, incrementing the player's level. Maybe they've leveled up and this is something you want to use in here. They increment by one and they're going to clamp between min of uh, one and a max of 99 example and that's what can handle the work for you inside of that function and it could be also different if you want to pass through different variables in here so you can use it for absolutely anything you like you can make it do all sorts of wonderful things so it's really up to you and how you want to make use of it um, but pass by reference that's what it means okay and that's why it's actually doing. you actually are changing the variable directly okay that's whenever you see this diamond shape so there you go. Hopefully that explains it for some of you who didn't know what the difference are between the diamond shaped pins and the circle sh uh, shaped pins. But it's really useful to understand why you may want to use pass by reference. It can save you a lot of hassle and save you duplicating a lot of functions. You can make it a bit more generic, a bit more dynamic and open for other uses as well.
So see if you can find uses for it in your own projects. Let us know if you found any good uses or interesting uses of your past by references in the comments below. They're always interested to see what people are doing with this information. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where your donation of just $1 a month gets you access to all our videos early, plus many other benefits as well. A massive thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.